immediate 24 hour stoppage. This is Maiden Dagenham, the newest film to show trade unions on the big screen. Today, we're going to be looking at a whole host of films over the last couple of decades that have portrayed trade unions, and let's look at how they've done that job. Maiden Dagenham is a bit of a success story for trade unions, actually. It shows the story of uh, women workers going on strike in Fords in Dagenham, and it shows a whole lot of tension that develops through the film as the women workers strike, initially supported by the men, then impacts on the men as they're laid off temporarily while the women strike affects them. As a result of that, you see some tension in families, you see some tension between the main characters, the husband and the wife, uh, and you see some real issues around, is the women's work as valuable as the men's? And it's a very uh, interesting development, but the women carry on and the women fight hard for their campaign. This strike is about one thing, and one thing only, fairness. Equal pay or nothing. Yes. Yes. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. The National Union official turns up, tries to sell the women out, tries to do a dodgy deal with Ford. What's going to happen to do with me? But the women continue, take their case to the union's conference, <laughs> and ultimately to the government, where they win the strike. Not only that, as a direct result of the strike, the UK's Equal Pay Act is introduced a couple of years later. Maiden Dagenham's well worth a watch. Just finished in British cinemas, just about to go to DVD, nip down your local store and get a copy. It's a good portrayal of trade unions. Morning. Next up is Norma Ray, a film set in the late 1970s in a mill town where everybody in the town works in the mill, the cotton mill. And Norma Ray is the title character who becomes unionised by a local activist who turns up uh, from the textile union and converts her to be the local rep. The film itself shows the story of Norma Ray uh, organising her own workers, gaining membership for the union and ultimately leading a strike and then a ballot to secure recognition. It's a tough film, there's a lot of questions about the union, a lot of difficulties for Norma Ray, it shows the role of both women and the difficulties of fighting against real hard managers in the late 1970s in, in American states. There's a case where Norma Ray's father dies on the job after getting pains in his arm and the boss won't let him uh, take time off to go and lie down. I think I better go now, Jimmy. Y'all hang on, Vernon. Your breaks are coming up. I think it shows a clear role for trade unions. Similar to normal way is a film called Bread and Roses, a Ken Loach film, which shows the story of two Mexican sisters turning up and one of them organising uh, in the trade unions, which reflects the campaign for janitors in the 1970s. You know, I get letters begging me to work here. You know how lucky you are? Do you realize that? You know, because I do a favor for Rosa. You know, arrange the paperwork. You know, decent paperwork. So for that, I charge a commission. Ah. And what kind of commission? Your first month's salary. We can split it over two months. I mean, you know. What do you say? Both films show women become more and more organized in trade unions organising and, and uh, getting recruitment in their own workplaces and ultimately the films themselves show similar themes. Next on our list is Billy Elliot, not a film you'd initially think perhaps has got a lot to do with trade unions. It's a very feel-good movie, it was a blockbuster movie that a lot of you would have seen. It tells the story of a kid who wants to become a dancer against the odds in a northern mining town and then ends up at the uh, Royal Ballet School. But the film is set totally against the backdrop of the miners' strike in 1984. And the whole family story is set against the difficulties of both the father and the older brother being involved in that strike for 52 weeks. And there's some great scenes of the police chasing the brother, some great picket line scenes, some fantastic trade union scenes where both the father and the older brother are on the line trying to turn over and stop the vans entering the, uh, the mines. It's a real gutsy, gritty film. Set, and set against that is a real heartwarming story of Billy Elliot finally getting to where he wants to get to. And there's a really amazing scene where the father, desperate to suddenly provide the money for Billy to go down to London, ends up trying to break the strike. And there's a very emotional scene where the older brother breaks into the mine to stop him working. Dad, you can't go back, not now! Look at this, there he is, man. What have we got to offer the first son? You can't do this, not now! Not after all this time, not after everything we've been through! But we bought it! It's a great scene, uh, it's a great film. It's an unmissable film in terms of... Uh, everything that goes on in it, but there's also a great seminal 
minor strike moments in the film, which are really worth watching from a trade union perspective. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Just get him out of here, Tony. <laughs> Next up is Hoffa, and we're looking at the, the film with the portrayal of Jack Nicholson playing Hoffa, uh, which is a really powerful film that shows both good and bad portrayals of trade unions. The early parts of the film show Hoffa out organising for the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, holding meetings, stopping people working, growing the recruitment and really growing the uh, strength of the transport union. Cross the line, join the Teamsters! That's right, that's right, put it down! And hey, don't pick that train up! Hey, 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 you don't need some managers to take! But uh, later in the film, we lose track of that. We lose the fact that Alpha actually built the Teamsters into a 1.5 million strong union. And actually the film delves very much more into the mafia side uh, and connections between the Teamsters and, uh, and the mob. Americans have tried to portray unions a lot in this sense. There's a lot of mob connections with trade unions. And ultimately the film ends up with the disappearance of the great man himself. It's a good film. It's worth watching just for Jack Nicholson's portrayal of Hoffa himself. Thanks for coming. Next up is I'm All Right Jack, probably the oldest of the films we're going to look at today, but a timeless classic. Think about it. Peter Sellers uh, plays the role of the shop steward in a big plant where really you can see a satire on both management and unions. It's great fun. It uh, shouldn't be taken too seriously, but there's some great moments. You'll see the trade union committee march across the forecourt march into the manager's office and demand that they lay off a man who hasn't got a union card. When the management agrees, they take an adjournment and come back in and demand that he's reinstated. Pure class. Can't take it too seriously. The sellers is fantastic. Both the management and the union are parodied. It's definitely worth a look when you get it in all good DVD stores. Uh, and because of its age, it's cheap. Definitely worth a look. Sticking with the comedy theme, next up is Carry On At Your Convenience. One of the Carry On films at the height of its powers shows a film set in a toilet making factory as you'd expect from a carry on film uh, WC Boggs is the name of the company there's a strike uh, which is all about demarcation all about asking people to do jobs they shouldn't be doing because if a tap fitter does it that means he's doing a waste pipe fitter's job if the waste pipe fitter does it that means he's doing a tap fitter's job well what the hell does it matter as long as they're both working it's a very um, kind of what you'd expect really it's, uh, it's baldy it's ribald it's a very poor portrayal of both workers and managers really <laughs> I think that it's one of the few carry-on films that bombed at the box office. And I suspect the reason for that is that people felt patronised by the way workers and managers were portrayed in the film. There are some good little moments. There's a great bit which will resonate with members of the CWU where an old-style manager is trying to hold a meeting with a union. It's going fairly well. A new-style young manager comes in from the outside, doesn't understand trade unionism. There's a strike within two minutes. But a less painful solution, in my opinion, was simply to cut out the extra tea rounds. So doesn't that make sense? Uh, just one moment, please, Mr. Lewis. Uh, am I to understand, then, that the management want the workers to stop going to their sh uh, loo uh, when they want to? Well, no, I didn't say that exactly. You just want to cut down on the number of trips that they want to make? Well, yes, that's it, exactly. I thought so. It is a clear case of restricted practice. Right into it. Everybody out! Not the greatest film ever made. It's a carry-on film. If you like carry-on, you'll like the film. Uh, not something I'd recommend, particularly. Brassed Off, on the other hand, is a marvellous film. It's, again, not specifically about trade unions, but it's set in the backdrop of the post miners strike and in the era of pit closures. And it's set around the Grimley Colliery Band. We were a brass band playing out at Grimley Colliery. The colliery gets closed, or was about to be closed, during the film, but the band plays on. It's a great portrayal of what's going on around pit closures, great portrayal of the rundown of British industry during the 80s, some fantastic performances and some great little scenes. There's a scene where one of the fellows who uh, has a skint and as the mine closes starts taking a part-time job as a clown and then votes for the redundancy payment and feels bad about himself and there's this fantastic line, do you still want to talk to me? I'm Coco the Scab. And it's a, it's, it's a real portrayal, gritty uh, show of what happened in mining industries when they were closed down, what happened post the miners' strike. It's a brilliant film. Pete Postlethwaite ends the film with a powerful speech and it really shows everything that was wrong about the rundown of British industry in the 80s and the role that trade unions played in fighting against that. This government has systematically destroyed an entire industry, our industry, and not just our industry, our communities, our homes, our lives. 
all in the name of progress and for a few lousy bob. If this lot were seals or whales, you'd all be up in my arms, but they're not, are they? No, no, they're not. They're just ordinary, common a garden, honest, decent human beings, and not one of them with an ounce of hope left. That's a great film. If you haven't seen it, don't miss it. Go buy the DVD. Brassed off, couldn't recommend it more highly. It's definitely my all-time top ten. Turning now to Wall Street, the second of our blockbuster movies today. Wall Street is an 80s classic. It actually shows the antipathy of trade unionism. Gordon Gecko is the real 80s Reagan Thatcher child. Business is business. You keep on buying. He's greedy. He's an uh, outright capitalist. He does anything to make a buck. He's a criminal. And he coined the great phrase, of course. Re, for lack of a better word, is good. And the interesting thing about the film is that the only person who ever sees through Gordon Gecko's aims is the shop steward, the trade unionist, who works in the airline factory when he buys it out, who is played by Martin Sheen, who's Charlie Sheen's father. Charlie Sheen, of course, in the film, is Gordon Gecko's acolyte and protégé. There came into Egypt a pharaoh who did not know. I beg your pardon, is that a proverb? No, a prophecy. The rich have been doing it to the poor since the beginning of time. The only difference between the pyramids and the Empire State Building is the Egyptians didn't allow unions. I know what this guy's all about, greed. He don't give a damn about Blue Star or the unions. He's in and out for the buck, and he don't take prisoners. Now, wait just a minute, Dad. Well, sure. Now, what's worth doing is worth doing for money. It's a bad bargain, and nobody gains. And if we do this deal, everybody gains. One of the interesting themes that runs through Wall Street is the comparison between greed and fairness. Martin Sheen represents Charlie Sheen's father and represents fairness in the film. Gordon Gecko represents greed and becomes a father figure to Charlie Sheen's character. In the end of the film, Charlie Sheen has to make a choice, and even though it's at great personal cost, he chooses fairness, and that's a very warm theme which runs through the film. Wall Street shows everything that was bad about the 1980s, but it does show both sides of the coin. It shows successful capitalism, and it shows the worst side of capitalism. But most importantly, it shows the trade unions and the representative of the trade unions fighting for his own workers' rights. It's a good film, it's a fun film, it's a real blockbuster, most of you would have seen it. If you haven't, go and watch it, and uh, go and watch the sequel in the cinemas. And finally, On the Waterfront, an old film starring Marlon Brando, where the Americans portray a very corrupt union, a union corrupted by the mob, uh, in which the local men stand up against the unions and organise against it and demand fairness. Brando's great in it, and the film's most remembered for the great line, I could have been a contender, but in truth, the film is a great portrayal of what happens when people stand up for themselves and organise against corruption. You want to know who works? The ones I pick to work. Now get going. Come on, all of you. Get in there. Come on, get to work. All of you. Come on, get up here. Come on, Pop. I'm a double. You work today. All my life, you push me around. Oh, come on. Hey! Well, that was a quick whiz through uh, some of the films that represented trade unions on the big screen. There are a number of things on the small screen that we might cover in the future. One of the things that's worth noting is that trade unions have often portrayed badly on the big screen, and that represents the kind of way that big business and the people who own film companies want to see trade unions. But often where workers have been portrayed well, those films are more successful. More worryingly is the number of few times that trade unions are actually shown on the big screen. Six million people are still members of a trade union in Britain and millions more around the world, tens of millions in the United States. And yet Hollywood doesn't, want to, doesn't really want to portray the subject. It's a shame, but it's one of the things we're always up against in terms of showing fairness and truth. Anyway, Maiden Dagenham's out on DVD soon. If you haven't seen it at the cinema, I definitely recommend it. Go and have a quick look. Thank <laughs> you.